Good evening, everyone. My name is Denike Olabi, and I'll be bringing you the topic, the senior pastor's wife and the assistant pastor's wife. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for gathering us into the flourishing garden again tonight. And we pray that you will speak to us again. You will refresh our souls. You will make our own word to come. And as we receive the word and begin to apply it, let our lives and ministries be better in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that for everyone tonight, the hearts will be opened to receive instructions in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So I'll be reading Ephesians chapter 4 from 1 to 3. And I'm also going to be concluding this teaching with this particular scripture. From verse 1. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, Apostle Paul speaking here, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Verse 2. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. And verse 3. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. The second scripture I'll read is from 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. Let all things be done decently and in order. Once again, my name is Denike Wulabi. I have several times heard of my principal mentors say anything with two heads is a monster. Whenever and any time an assignment involves more than one person, even when all are equal or mates, there's usually a leader, either an appointed one or he emerges, you know, in the course of the assignment. I remember when my husband came into the ministry, many of them went through the induction at that time. And on the last day, they were all given letters of posting. There were 70 posted out to plant uh, 35 churches, two by two. Now all of them were mates. They entered the same time, the same entry date, but some of them were given letters as assistant pastors, while Others receive letters to be the senior pastor. Now, this is part of the process of ensuring that everything is done decently and in order, according to 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 40. Remember, anything with two heads is what is a monster. Recognize that whichever way a leader emerges, it must be accorded the respect and honor that is due to the office, and he himself should acknowledge it and be guided appropriately. The book of Psalms, chapter 49 and verse 20, the word says clearly there, Man that is in honor and understandeth it not is like a beast that perisheth. None of us shall perish. For all of us on this platform, the orchard. I trust we are not unfamiliar with hierarchy, seniority, and protocol in whichever church ministry we belong. And as much as I know, placement in ministry is not done on the consideration of chronological age, except for disengagement policy when it's time in some ministry. It's not done by consideration of age, but is usually based on date of entry, when the pastor signs up to be a pastor in the ministry, grace, and as led by the leadership of the ministry. This discourse, we shall be looking at the situation where two or more pastors who are married are put together to work in a local assembly or a ministry assignment where one is a senior pastor and the others are to support or to assist him. And I will refer to the wife of the senior pastor or the pastor in charge 
as the senior pastor's wife and the wife of the other pastor or pastors assisting him as the assistant pastor's wife. Now, in my 25 years of being a pastor's wife, I have watched the relationship between several senior pastor's wife and assistant pastor's wives. Some have been beautiful episodes, some not as beautiful, and some others have been action movies, both indoor and outdoor actions. And uh, very shortly, I'll open the floor for you to tell me exactly which one you have watched so far. The last two episodes mentioned, that is the not-so-good episode and the, uh, the action movies, you know, are not supposed to be so. Because I suppose that before being pastors' wives, we are first believers. And probably tongue-speaking and Holy Ghost-filled. And we are expected to uphold the basic standard of behavior that is expected of a believer, even under provocation. Now, the word Christians, it came when they actually saw them that they were behaving like Christians. That is why they were called Christians in the first place. So before you became a pastor's wife, you are, it's expected that you have, you have been forced a believer. So there's a basic standard of behavior that is expected of any one of us. The challenge is this. When we got born again, it is a spirit that got born again, not the soul, not the flesh. Hence, each one of us needs to deliberately and consciously submit the flesh to conform with acceptable God's word standard by consistent renewal of the mind and exercise in godliness and love. From Romans 12, from verse 1 to 2, you see the need for us to continue to renew our mind. Except we do this, we will be living in the flesh. There's a way that some of us were before we give our lives to Christ. Then <laughs> some people could even fight, street fight. Somebody says this and then they can go a wire and do anything. We all have a past. But when we say we are born again, it's very important for us to submit ourselves to the conditioning of the word of God. It doesn't make us mumus. No, not at all. It only makes us to be better. And I pray that for every one of us, our desire will be to be better version of ourselves every day in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let me quickly talk about the foundation for relationship. Are you still there or chats? Now we're talking about the benefits of good relationship between the senior pastor's wife and the assistant pastor's wife. It has a lot of benefits. Now, let me tell you this. Last year, Mommy Edelia and I decided to, to establish this platform, The Orchard. And between then, last year and now, many of you can attest you know, to the number of lives that have been touched, the blessings that you have received on this platform. It's born out of relationship. That's one of the benefits of having a good relationship between you and the other pastor's wife. We work together, you know, by uh, divine arrangement. They came in as senior pastors to the station we were then, and then we bonded as a family. We bonded as a family. Is it that it was just uh, 100% uh, how will I call it? But I believe God helped the two of us. We had a good time together. We worked together, you know, in the children's department, in the teens church as well. We lived together. And today, how many years later? More than 20 years later, we are still together. And it's 
One of the benefits of having good relationship, we started this platform, The Orchards, and we can count the number of uh, pastor's wives. And even non-pastor's wives that just came to spy what we are doing that have been blessed by this. You don't know, you don't know where good relation, establishing a good relationship and loving can take you to. So let's please, uh, pay attention to, to this. Benefits of good relationship between the senior pastor's wife and the assistant pastor's wife. Number one, you have a safe community where you can really be vulnerable and be open about your challenges and weaknesses. This is your company, Acts 423. You should know as a pastor's wife, that your options for relationships are not the same as that of a wife whose husband is not a pastor. So please, treasure your options and make good use of them. Me, personally, I came from a Muslim family. I went to a Muslim secondary school. Most of my friends, before I gave my life to Christ, were um, Muslims. And my family members, most of them Muslims, then I gave my life to Christ. You see, I came out of that background. My options of relationships at the level that I'm talking about now is limited. So if I refuse to work on relationship now that I have come to Christ, <laughs> I tell you it would have been a lonely life for me. So when you have good relationship, one of what you benefit is that you have a safe community where you can be vulnerable. I can't keep running to Muslim friends and Muslim families to tell them of my challenges in life. I can't do that. So when you relate where you have a safe community where you can be vulnerable, you can open up about your challenges, you need to treasure it. You need to treasure it. Then number two, it's a good opportunity to model healthy female relationship and genuine love for others to emulate. Very, very important. It's a good opportunity to model healthy female relationship and genuine love that others can emulate. The fact is that the way you relate with yourself is open for all to see, as Elia said. The sisters, the wives, the men, even the teenagers are watching. And you never know who you are influencing as you choose good relationship with that pastor's wife. Next is unity of purpose that can make for success in the assignment of your spouses in that land and affects the health of the church positively. This is made possible as your spouses are influenced and restrained by the good relationship between you, the pastor's wives. If you are not relating well, if you are fighting each other, I tell you it won't be long when it will also impact on the relationship of the pastors in the church. And that will not make for a healthy church and your own happiness and rest in that station. Next, you need to know that it's a small world. As it's often said, it's really a small world. You may think that you are never going to meet again. No. The next bend, you may just be meeting again. You might just meet again at the future assignments. It may bring you together again. Or life itself might bring you together again. In recent time, we have seen two pastor students get married. In the ministry where we serve, two pastor students get married. Now, imagine if they had worked together and they had not built a good relationship when they were working and they have gone into action movies. How would it have been? That, oh, I want to introduce the person I will marry and it's the daughter of the son of the person that you have gone into action movies with, you know. So you never know where you are going to meet again. It's a small world, and we should be careful. Praise the Lord. It's also good recommendation. I remember vividly one time like that, my husband received a very strange call. 
it was uh, one of the leaders in our ministry calling to ask about a pastor. And, you know, at that time, if you want to be true to God, you know, we are not supposed to lie as children of God. You must say what you know. They were asking him about the person of the pastor, and he had to say the truth. And what shocked me the most is that, because I was listening to that conversation, what shocked me the most was when I asked the question, what about the wife? What about the wife? I said, hey, Olua, what about the wife? Then he had to say what he knew about the wife at that time. See, today that pastor did not know that my husband was called, you know, to ask about him. And the next we heard, he was giving a foreign assignment. Praise the Lord. So, when you are relating now, you don't know who is going to be asked about you tomorrow. And you think that you don't need each other again. And you can do anything that uh, very shortly we shall be separated, transfer with separators. You don't know. I don't think that anybody, anybody that God brings my way that is just uh, a coincidence. It's just like that. There must be a part for that person to play in my destiny. I may not know it now. But later on, God may reveal it. But it's very important that we comport ourselves as children of God with anyone we meet. Let it be that you try your best. Even when you come across some people that, are, that seem to be unlovable, let it be that you try your best, that the fault is not from you. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. When you are the senior pastor's wife, in this talk about relationship with the other pastors, so what do you do when you are the senior pastor's wife? First, understand that it's a privilege of God to be in that position. You did not sign up for it that in this assignment, my husband will always be senior pastor. And then I will get to be the senior pastor's wife. No, understand that it's a privilege of God to be in that position. And number two, take the lead in initiating love and relationship. Now, the other pastor's wife, maybe they are younger than you, younger in ministry or whatever. They may be watching to see if you are open for relationship before they come close to you. So that somebody will not say they are being forward. Maybe they are being friendly, they are moving close, or they don't know whether they'll be bothering you or whatever. Very recently, somebody told me she called the, the new pastor's wife that she wanted to come over to visit as they were just sad. She said, no, 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 please don't come. I've not settled that. You see, people may just be waiting to see whether you are open to relationship. You know, so please, as a senior pastor's wife, in that place where you are serving, you have other pastor's wife with you, take the lead in initiating love and relationship. Take the lead in initiating love and relationship. Number three, be a good example. Spiritually and physically, be a good example. That is why God has placed you in that position. You need to be a good example. Be an example of a believer. Be an example of what a wife should be. Be an example of what a mother should be. Be an example of what a church worker should be. Be an example of what a pastor's wife should be. Be disciplined and respect yourself. Be disciplined and respect yourself. There are certain things that you will be doing that will be bringing about this respect for you. And then when they are not respecting you, it becomes an issue. But you yourself, please be disciplined and respect yourself. Number four, be patient with the pastor's wife. Don't be easily disappointed. You know, some people behave, like I said before, you don't know their story. Maybe if you knew their story, you'd be more understanding. So once again, I want to call on every one of us in our relationships with people. Apply 1 Corinthians 13 from verse 4 to 7. The next point is don't be absorbed with entitlement mentality. You know, I'm the mommy, I'm the senior pastor's wife, you know. 
and then they should call me mommy. She should call me other pastor's wife. She should call me mommy. When they get to church, they must first come to come and greet me. They must do this. They must. All those things may be good. But please don't be absorbed with that entitlement mentality so that you don't get hungry. Even if some people don't call you mommy or an expected title, please don't get angry. Love, when you love them and you pack their lives, you can hand that mommy for life. Oh. There are some people that they call mommy, mommy, just <laughs> because you are together. The moment you are not together, they know they are mommy. I know the people that are mommy for me. I mean, because they say maybe we are all calling each other mommy, but I know the ones that when I say mommy, I mean it that this is mommy. Praise the Lord. Love and impact. We hand that for you, for life, not entitlement mentality. The next, your congregation notices how you relate with your assistant pastor's wife and other and other pastor's wives if you are more than two. And this is part of the qualification for genuine respect for you. They see what is happening. They see how you relate with people, you know. I, I remember when, when we were in Port Harcourt, somebody told me when she saw the way we were relating with each other, the pastor's wife in that station, she says, I see synergy. I love this. I see synergy. And then I had to, so all these people, they have seen what we are doing. And that became also a motivation for me that people are seeing you. Not that I'm playing to the gallery. It's just a motivation to always do better, to be conscious, you know, of love. Praise the Lord. So they notice how you are relating with people. And it's one of the qualifications for genuine respect for you by members of that congregation. If you are such that... Uh, you just call the other pastors why you call them by name. You come here, you go there, you do this, you do that. It will also reduce your respect for those who are matured in that congregation. The next point is that you must be sensitive to their needs. There are some congregations that is only the senior pastors and family that they know. That's the orientation they have. They give to them, they take care of them. Why only few members minister to the assistant pastor and the family? As much as it's within your decision, please be sensitive to the needs of other pastors, the pastor's family, and all of that. And ensure that you carry your husband along on this. It's very, very important. And uh, uh, this has so many sides, you know. Maybe I'll talk about it later. Because there, there are some times I've had an experience that uh, I noticed that a particular pastor's family, they were kind of struggling. And I made it a duty. I even made a timetable, how I would buy uh, school supplies, biscuits, and all that stuff for the children every month and all that. But I also noticed that it was like she was drawing back. She was not happy receiving. And then there's another pastor's wife who also now uh, told me that... Um, she made reservation about not wanting to be at the receiving end, you know, all of the time. Well, and not just what that one said, but because of what I noticed myself, I had to caution myself. That's the truth. I had to caution myself to reduce the way I was giving to her and family as it were, you know. But as much as it lies with you, please be sensitive to their needs and God will bless you as you do that in the name of Jesus Christ. So these are the things that you should know as the senior pastor's wife that will help you in building relationship with the other pastor's wife. Understand that it's a privilege. Take the lead in initiating love and relationship very importantly. They are watching to see whether you are open to a relationship or not. Be a good example. Don't be absorbed with entitlement mentality, and then be conscious that you are being watched and also be sensitive to the needs of the other pastors. Maybe the congregation are bypassing every other pastor and just coming to give 
to the senior pastor alone. And of course, lastly, if there are issues as a senior pastor, so whether you are young or you are older, please undo every situation with God's wisdom and love. Love, the Bible tells us, covers a multitude of sin. And do every situation with God's wisdom and love. And please, I will say this to you, and I will say this to the assistant pastor's wife at all. Be careful the way you relay information to your husband. Be very, very careful the way you tell your husband, the way you communicate information to him. If it's not going to help the relationship between the pastors, know how you are going to word it. Know how you are going to say it so that you are not causing problem in the church. God bless you. Now I'm talking about when you are an assistant pastor's wife. Remember I say assistant pastor, it can be uh, the wife of the direct assistant to the pastor or one of the other pastors. What are you expected to do are you pay, as you pay attention to relationship in the station? Number one, understand that the senior pastor's wife probably had served as an assistant pastor's wife. In fact, many senior pastor's wives have also served as assistant pastor's wives. So please don't despise where you are and don't be envious. Don't be envious. Don't despise where you are. Be patient to climb the ladder by yourself. It won't be long when God will position you. And what is even most important is the impact. Is the source that you are touching. Wherever you have, find opportunity to be a blessing, to impact lives where you are. It's not the position. Some people do. There are some members that are even impacting lives more than pastors. It's not the title. It's how committed you are to the, the task that is at hand. And number two, be a good follower. Know that it's not everything you'll be told. You need to learn by observation. If you want to learn by experience, it may take you very long for experience to teach you or to learn by experience. There are some things that you will learn by being a good follower. I remember when we were going to plan the first Bible school, when Mommy Yedele, when they came by transfer to the station, we were already in that station. And when she came, she talked about holding Bible school for the children or for the teenagers at that time. I learned I'd never run Bible school for teenagers before. Guagualada was my second station. I never ran Bible school before. But when she came, she had done it before. I learned from her. And from that time till now, there is no year that passed that I did not run Bible school for teenagers. Then graduated to having Bible school from age five as well. Because I took my time to learn from her. We sat down to develop outlines together. Even when I had a baby. My baby was young. I had my third child there. I'll back my baby to teach, to coordinate the class. But I took my time to learn from her. Praise the Lord. Number three, give honor to your senior pastor's wife. And do your position of assistant pastor's wife with humility. Whether you are older than the senior pastor's wife, you are more educated than her, you are from a better background, according to your own estimation, no, Abby, or you have a better dress sense, whatever, is a seed. Do it genuinely. God is watching. Give honor to whom honor is due. Then next, don't attempt to compete with your senior. It may hurt you. Many other positions have paid their dues. And now they are enjoying certain privileges and blessings. Be patient to climb your own ladder. Don't say this is the way they are doing for the senior pastor's wife. This is what she's wearing. This is what they are doing. And then you want to be like that overnight. It's not like that. So many that you saw. There was a time that I was wearing one shoe for a very long time. I remember the color of that shoe. I don't want to say it now. Either Wednesday service or Sunday service, I was wearing only one shoe. There was a time that we were doing Bendan Boutique. I'll go to Lagos and go and supermarket. I'll go and uh, pick Bendan Boutique. 
<laughs> so if you are coming in as a pastor's wife now and you, be, you begin to look at the ones that are ahead of you that oh these ones are wearing clothes so uh, you want to jump there overnight it does not work like that there were times that my husband and i we had gone for food three days without food not that we were fasting please understand that your seniors many of your seniors they have paid their dues climb your own ladder don't be envious and don't attempt to compete with them. Next, when it pertains to issues of the church, especially, let your senior pastor's wife know if you are led to do something, for example, especially when you are going to put your name to it. Otherwise, do it anonymously. Let me give an example. Maybe you get to the church and you see that the the, the cloth they use on the communion table is not okay. You have an idea of a better thing to be used, you know. Then you decide to go to the market and you bought it. And you now come and give it to the communion stewards. That this thing that you are doing is not good, it's not fine. They don't do it like this. Then you give them another material. Huh. No, there's a better way to do it. You can discuss with the senior pastor, so especially if she's part of the communion stewards, she's regular in the communion room. Ah, please, ma, this is what I'd observed. May I be allowed to just make a change in this and all that? And then you can go ahead. But for her, for example, to come in and they now start mentioning your name, that so, 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 she brought this for us and all that. You know, we all see her blood flowing in our veins. For some of us, it may not matter. But for some other people, it may really matter. And it can be the beginning of problem between the two of you in that station. So please, pertaining to the issues of the church, let your senior pastor's wife know what you are doing. Then next, don't talk ill of your senior pastor's wife before your members or report her to anybody any member of the congregation, if there are issues, be bold to bring up that issue for settlement and do it in love and humility. Everything can be trashed out. But when you go about reporting her, it will still get back to her. And that is not going to be good for relationship. The next point is encourage your husband to honor the senior pastor and his family and refrain from giving your husband information that will bring strife between the pastors, especially when that information is not really necessary for him to know. You know, you can refrain from doing that. Encourage him to honor the senior pastor and his family. Praise the Lord. The uh, I witnessed some wives that they are the ones that are even putting petrol. If there are some issues in the in the church, you know, they they are the ones that will put petrol. And now, there are some instances that have... <laughs> okay, let, let me say this. For example, we were in a church and there was a meeting ongoing. And my husband told the assistant pastor then to call uh, one person that was not in the meeting. That please call him uh, either by phone, no way. It is that this meeting has started. And then they, they were waiting and waiting. I now moved out of the office since they were starting the meeting. And when I got outside, I saw the assistant pastor that was sent to call the other pastor. He was standing outside with that pastor and they were talking and laughing. I did not tell my husband, see what I saw. Your assistant pastor, when you sent him out, see he was gisting with somebody. That would not have helped their relationship. So there are some information like that that, you know, may not be necessary. Uh, there may be other times that at a very relaxed time, maybe after we have left the station, we can joke about it. Then it did not matter again. But if I had got home that day and said, see, when you, that time you said that pastor should go and call that pastor, see what I saw them doing. Uh, it wouldn't have received it well. So such things you can refrain yourself from giving your husband unnecessary information or don't let me call it unnecessary, certain information that you know is not going to help relationship in the church. Next, when you are the assistant pastor's wife, understand that sometimes because of the assignment of your husband is closer to the grassroots 
and then it may seem as if a lot of people come to his office as if they are close to him and if you're always around that closeness may also extend to you please i want to beg you never take that or misconstrue that to mean that the members of the church they love you and your husband more than the senior pastor you know they say position we put people that are senior to us you know we look at them from afar and then you find it easier to relate with uh, the junior ones that happens often you, know, you want to give the leader the respect and then because of the assignment of the assistant pastor is closer to the grassroots never take that to mean that oh they love us more than the senior pastor and that begins to make certain disrespect to want to start coming in or misbehavior no it's not like that you must ensure that you give honor to whom honor is due. Hallelujah. Next, understand that you and your husband are under authority. Assistant pastor's wife. Don't call for a meeting your senior pastor's wife is not aware of. Except, of course, if, I, if it's going to be a plan to honor her, a surprise something to honor her and the family, fine or you are a staff of the ministry and your capacity or you need to call for certain meetings but when it's but when it's not that way please don't call for a meeting that your senior pastor's wife is not aware of it's not right and it's not going to make for good relationship between the two of you next thing the church has only one pastor please not two pastors Remember I said earlier that anything with two heads is a monster. You have a senior pastor, he has a wife or and other pastors to assist. Probably your husband is one of them. The senior pastor is answerable to the leadership of that ministry. Allow him to run the church. Don't go here and there trying to uh, create uh, situations that will not make him to be the leader of the church indeed please allow the senior pastor to run the church encourage your husband as well to allow the senior pastor to run the church praise the lord so that's about that now everything that has been said concerning the senior pastor's wife and the assistant pastor's wife all the counsel that has been given so far it has to be done in love for it to be effective if you follow each one of the counsel given above mechanically without affection or a loving disposition then you are just being officious and it will show a lasting relationship cannot be built this way that is actions born out of genuine love is what god will also reward as well you know the Bible talks about King Amazia. He did those things that were right, but not with a very pure heart. He didn't do it with a pure heart. God sees our heart. We are not telling you to just be mechanical in your approach. Let me just say, uh, do it this way. Let me not step uh, on our toes. Let me just do this. And you are just being officious. No. It will show and it will still not build relationship and people will notice that you are just managing one another. What we are saying is, let the love of God that has been shared abroad in your heart, let it reflect in your relationship with one another. The church is going to benefit and you are going to benefit because your happiness and rest in that station also depends on the good relationship that you build with your co-laborer. Praise the Lord. And I told you at the beginning that I'll be reading Ephesians 4 from 1 to 3 again as I conclude. Apostle Paul speaking, he said, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Praise the Lord. We have talked tonight about the senior pastor's wife and the assistant pastor's wife. 
very important. In fact, if I have the time, is there are certain pastors that I really want to focus on tonight. Because it's important for you to understand that, uh, like they say, Rome was not built in a day. Don't be envious of those that are ahead of you. Take your time to learn. There are many things that I, I, I do in ministry that people think that, oh, creative, this money is creative. I actually learned it. I learned it from others. Praise the Lord. From the people that I've worked with, for, for, from seniors. I learned those things and I apply it and then people were clapping as if uh, it's always been my own creative ideas. But no, there are some things that you, you learn by observation. Not by experience, but by observation. There's so much benefit that is building a good relationship between the pastors. Well, like I told you, you are here today as an orchard because some people who worked together more than 20 years ago, they built a good relationship at that time. Talking about Mom Yudelia and I, then we put together this platform that has been a blessing to you. Please be careful of relationship. Relationship can take you places. It can bring good recommendation for you. Like I mentioned earlier, my husband was called by leadership to ask about a pastor. If he had given a negative reporting report at that time, I don't know what could have happened to him. You don't know who would be at the, at the place, at the right time and place to say a word for you. But if what they have heard about you is how you used to fight your senior and all of that, who is going to put in a word for you? For your own joy, or rather your own happiness and rest in a station, be careful to build relationship. It will help you. It will help you. And for the seniors, please be patient with the pastor's wives that are working with you. I forgot to talk about when love is rejected, even before I conclude, there are some times that uh, it's like your love is being rejected by people, you know, by pastors. So, like I say, you need to understand why and see how you can help. But if you have done all of that and uh, your love is still being rejected or the person is closing up, just be sincere before God. When this happens, let your heart be pure that the fault is not from you. Then, very importantly, avoid situations where the negative situation is exposed to members. Try your best to ensure that the relationship, the negative situation is not dis disclosed to members. And also be smart to avoid being embarrassed by the other person. Avoid clashes. Don't allow people to hear your voices. Protect your honor. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you a story. A pastor's wife that we worked with and i don't know i don't know i don't know i don't want to justify myself but it was so bad that he told the the children not to come close to us i know children will say things that my mommy said i should not play with those people i should not go to those people praise the lord and another place i we worked in a place that it was the pastor that did not want a relationship and I saw that I had to pull back a little because I didn't want problem in their marriage. The husband did not want the relationship. So sometimes when you try your best, don't, don't uh, how do I put it now? Don't impose yourself on people who do not want a relationship with you. What is important is for you to be sincere and let God say your heart that you tried your best to build a good relationship, a lasting relationship. You tried your best to love, but you have been rejected. Let God see your heart. You know you can't hide from God. He knows whether you are the problem or not. Don't let the problem be from you. And like I said, it can be so beautiful when there is uh, love in the station, starting from the pastors, the pastor's wife, the family, when there's love. It reflects on the health of the church. It reflects on the growth of the church. It reflects on the members as well because they will notice that all of you are one. So please, but if you are being rejected, don't 
don't say I must love you by force. <laughs> don't say that. And uh, uh, don't, don't impose yourself on people. Like I said, I experienced that and I had to pull back because I noticed the pastor, not the wife now, did not want a relationship. So I had to pull back. And God will help us all in the name of Jesus Christ. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for the opportunity to share your word again tonight. Thank you for the lessons that we have learned from this teaching tonight. We receive grace, O oh Lord, to love. We receive grace to be an example of a believer. We receive grace to allow our actions and words to be uh, a motivation, to be a motivation to love in the assemblies that we belong. We receive grace to be a shining example and to build lasting relationship with our co-workers in the name of Jesus. And for everyone that has been hurt, because they have tried to love before, but now they are taking decisions they are not going to. Please heal their wounds and give them the grace and the strength to love again, to reach out again to people. We cannot say because our love was rejected in one place, then we are refusing to love or extend love again. Father, heal every wound and give us the grace to extend love again, to love again in the name of Jesus Christ. Our Lord, as we do this, we pray that you continue to bless the work of our hand, you continue to bless the assignment that you have given unto our husbands in the name of Jesus Thank you, Father, for this change that has come for every hot chat today. And it shall begin to reflect in every way that we are serving. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you all.